court's not part of my future. What does that mean? It means I'm home. Excuse me for being confused. A couple of hours ago, you were ready to walk out and never look back. God, we said some terrible things to each other. Ever since the fight before I got mugged. Before those punks murdered my son. We did lose our baby. I mean, it's, a miscarriage is tough on couples, and this just seems so cruel. I just think that maybe we're turning all of our anger and sadness on each other. Well, just so long as you worked it out for yourself. What are you doing back here? I want to put our marriage back together. And what makes you think that's what I want? I wish we knew what happened to Marty and Dylan after we left the community center. Oh, um, I, I, I can find out. Um, uh, Hector, Hector Cruzado was there. Um, he probably knows something. That guy who broke the basketball game up. Have you? Yeah. He really scared me. Yeah, well, he's a scary guy. You know, I... I gotta ask. You believe me, don't you? You know I wasn't the one who mugged that lady, the one who lost her baby? Hey, I know you're not the one who mugged Blair. How? Just by looking at you. And besides, anyone who does such great drawings could never be vicious like that. <sighs> After you're done calling, I better, I better go. Oh, hello, uh, Hector? Yeah, it's Christian. Could you, could you just hold on one second? Okay. Um, could you, could you stay for a while? Um, I, I want to show you something. Sure. Okay, all right. Hello? Yeah, hey, um, it's Chris. I just wanted to know, do you know what went down at the community center? I just wanted to know if you knew anything. Dr. Price, you handsome devil, you. You know, if you're here for Bo and Nora's rehearsal dinner, you're here way too early. Uh, no, Rachel's meeting me here early for a celebratory toast. What are you celebrating? Oh, oh, not that I'm prying. I just want to know if I should have some complimentary champagne ready. Uh, no, thanks. We're just, uh, celebrating Rachel's final final of the semester. Both figured she could use maybe a little something to help her unwind before that big, uh, Hannon Gannon Buchanan intertribal meeting tonight. <laughs> oh, yes. We could all use a good stiff belt of something to brace us for that. I mean, the thought of Nora's nice, normal parents meeting Asa and Alex, I wouldn't miss that for the world. <laughs> so, how did Rachel survive her first year in law school? The truth? She's been so uptight, I'm afraid to ask. But, uh, I'm hoping she feels good about this final. Because I really just want her to enjoy her mother's wedding. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Ace that sucker. Let the party begin. <laughs> Nora, let's just get it out in the open. What is it? What is this thing that you've been keeping from me? You were acting weird last Valentine's Day. I know. And ever since. Now, I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. Oh, please don't choke, Bo. Okay, sorry. This is, uh, it's definitely no joke to you. This has been causing you to have nightmares, so it must be big. It must be scary. At least to you, it is. Yeah. Yeah, to me it is. <laughs> you know... I think I really don't need to drag you into this, okay? No, not okay, no. Honey, if you can't share something, something this big, something that upsets you this much with me, you know, with the guy that you're supposed to get married to tomorrow, what are we doing here? What do you mean? I mean, if we can't talk to one another openly to each other, then why should we even get married?
Don't say anything like that, please. I love you and I trust you so much. And I want to marry you tomorrow. No, absolutely no second thoughts. No, no reservations. No cold okay, feet. Okay, honey, but, but you can't tell me what's bothering you, right? No. Yeah, I mean, yes. I mean, I can't. I'm just okay, I'm so afraid. Okay, honey, here. No, no, it's all right. Come on. Come on, just sit down. Sit down and then calm down. Just calm down, okay? I'll, I'll go get us a couple of bottles of that chocolate drink and then I'll make us some popcorn. Then we'll have a nice long talk about this. No. Okay? No. What? What, huh? Honey, you're the one who brought this up. You said you had something that you wanted to tell me. Now, are you ever going to tell me about this? I just... I'm afraid that if I tell you... I'm just... I'm afraid... that if I do tell you, then... It will turn out to be something that you will rather not have known in the first place. I have no idea what that could possibly be. You know, it was just a long, long time ago. It's over. I mean, it never was. It just happened. And I just think it doesn't make any sense to bring it up. Honey, it's too late. It's up. It just, it has to do with, uh, things that split, uh, me and Hank up. Well, we talked all about that. Look, whatever mistakes you and Hank made, whatever mistakes I made in the past, we're not gonna repeat those. No, I'm not talking about those things. Then what are you talking about? I am afraid to commit to marrying you. But not... But not because of you. I'm not afraid to be married to you. I'm afraid for you to be married to me. What? Why? Because I don't think I'm good enough to be your wife. I hurt you before when I said that I wanted to end the marriage, but I was hurting, too. If, if you're willing, I would like another chance. That's what you think about me. You don't know spit. You know that? You know, you stay out all night with some kind of a cheap tramp, and then you just waltz in here. You tell me that it's all over, that you're leaving me. Then a couple hours later, you come back, tiptoeing back. You say, oops, never mind. Let's start over. And I'm supposed to jump all over there like some kind of a puppy. I'm upset. So was I. So what? Todd, we had had that horrible fight, and then, and then it happened, and I, I just thought that we had lost hope. That's all for us. What changed your mind? I don't know. I just, I, I made a mistake. I was wrong, that's all. Yeah. I could see where kissing goodbye $30 million might be the wrong choice. You went running back to court, and he didn't exactly jump all over your offer. We got three cartons of stuff in there. A carton of kids' clothes, a carton of kids' toys, and then a carton of a bunch of other stuff. And I want you to take it over to St. James Church, all right? Sure thing. And then when you're done there, I want you to come back. There's gonna be some other stuff that's gonna need dumping later. No problem, Mr. Manny. There's gonna be some changes made around here. Um, everybody's okay. Um, Javier never, never pulled the gun out. Um, the cops came right after we left. He's got a gun? What's his problem? Why didn't he want us playing basketball there? Well, the community center is our territory now. That whole gang thing is so creepy to me. I don't know why anyone would want to join one in the first place. But 
I'm glad you're not in one. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I just um, finished this new drawing. It's like the one of the horse. Remember the one I gave you? Well, this one's better, I mean, I think. <laughs> cool. That horse was so great. I'd like to see all your work. Um, oh, stay here. Um, I'll go get it, okay? Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> Who are you? Um, hi. I'm Jessica. A Christian's friend. Huh. We were playing basketball down at the community center. And, um... Well, Christian brought me back here because I cut my arm and he just wanted to patch it up for me. Did I say I'm Jessica? <laughs> Jessica Buchanan. <laughs> nice to meet you, Jessica. Oh, are you Mr. Clint Buchanan's daughter? Yeah. You know my father? Yes. He, he and his newspaper were very helpful to me recently. Very helpful. And I know uh, your brother. Kevin. Yes. yes. And I met Joe. He's a very nice young man. How do you know Joey? Oh, I work for Dorian Lord, uh, Vickers. You're... Oh, right. You're Carlotta. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Joey always tells me how nice you are. Oh, well, thank you. That's nice to know. Yeah. Oh, hi. Uh, Ma, this is, uh, Jessica. Jessica Buchanan, yes. We were just getting acquainted. So, how is the basketball game? Fine. Mm. Oh, well, Jessica, Jessica just wanted to come by and, uh, look at some of my drawings, so I brought her by. <laughs> That's good, since this young man is a terrific artist. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, do your parents know that you're here? Since it's getting late, I, I don't want them to worry. Uh, they're both at work. Ah, so they don't know. Well, I was thinking of calling your father anyway to thank him for his help. Maybe I should just give him a call. He might want to pick you up. Okay. Sure. See? You kept ragging on me about my study technique. Well, they paid off. My first year ended on a high note. <laughs> All right, well, here's to my survivor. Mm. Oh, I just wish I didn't have to leave for London so soon. But we'll visit every chance we get. I can't wait to Grandma, Selma, and Grandpa Lynn meet you. They're gonna love you. They're I'm... gonna be so happy that they're... Sorry to interrupt, guys, but, um... The hospital called, and Mr. Walensky is out of recovery. Oh, okay. Thanks, Renee. Look, I gotta go, but I will be back as fast as I can. Go ahead. I'll just hang out here all by my lonesome until it's time to pick up my grandparents. Okay, I will be back by party time, I guarantee it. Listen, you. Eat something. You've been up all night and half the day. Your engines need fuel, okay? Yes, doctor. Mm. Mm. <laughs> hey there, Rachel. How's my niece? Get away from me. <laughs> What's that about? I don't want to talk to you. You say you're my friend, but you're not. Leave me alone. Where is this coming from? You're not good enough to be married to me? Come on. Other than a few annoying habits, I think you make one great roommate, and I have every reason to believe that you're going to make just as great a wife. You know, I'm way past uh, being scared off by some new secrets from your distant past. I haven't run screaming into the night yet, have this I? This won't be funny, Bo. Okay. I'm sorry. Look, don't make this any tougher on you than it already is. All right? Uh, no. Bo, that could be my office. Too bad, too bad. Let the machine pick it up, okay? Look. Hey, you're not going to be able to dodge this. All right? Here. There. You got to tell me. While I was married to Hank, I was unfaithful to him.
When you want me to come back for the other stuff? Um, it won't be necessary. The other stuff won't be leaving today. Thank you very much, Mr. Manning. I just lost a baby. Our baby. And you're tossing around threats like you're going to throw me out like yesterday's trash. Well, you're the one that wanted to leave. So go. I'm not standing in your way. Todd, if, if you think that I'm pining away for, for court, forget about it, because I have. It was just a stupid fantasy. You're my husband. You're my reality. Sorry. I'm not. And I'm willing to make a... To take a chance at this, I mean, Todd, we've gone through so much together. Doesn't that count for anything? Is it so impossible for us just to, to try again? You said it yourself, Blair, and the only reason that we were together was that there was a baby. Now the baby's gone. So why pretend that there's anything more to it? You know, you're right, Todd. Why pretend? There's more to life than love. Of course. There's money. I need you, Todd. And as much as you don't want to think it, you need me, too. You got no call to be so mad at me, Rachel. Don't I? No. The reason I wouldn't help you get your hands on some speed is because I care about you. you. Look, you can't play both sides, RJ. Excuse me, can... What are you staring at? I asked you to help me only after you said you'd always be there for me. Remember? That was your line to me. Then when I did ask you for help, you let me down. Look, I'm out of here. Where'd you get the speed? I don't know what you're talking about. I've got some place to You be. are totally wired. You are the last person who ought to be moralizing at me. After everything you've done? Please. I can't say that, uh, that I'm not surprised uh, by what you just told me, because I am. But... So don't think that I'm joking right now, okay? Because I'm not. You're not the first person in the world to ever cheat on a spouse. Well, that's very rational of you. Good for you. Betty, you want to get to how you feel about this? Were you in college then? Law school. Oh, well, did you, you were practically a kid. Those were pretty wild times. And I know that you and Hank, you had some, uh, some tension between you. So, I'll, you know, naturally I can understand how something like that could happen. It's worse than that. Why? What, what was it? Was it, a, was it a friend of Hank's or somebody he knew? Or... It was his brother. What? It was RJ. Husband's brother while you were married to Hank? Hank's and my relationship wasn't going very well. Uh, we, uh, we argued a lot. We never really saw each other, so we argued whenever we did see each other, and I, I think we never saw each other because we were trying to avoid arguing with each other. Anyway, I was, I was very, I was lonely and angry. 
instead of spending my time, free time going home so I could argue with Hank, I started spending it at the campus pub. Drinking. And partying. At the same time, R.J. was there. Uh, he was there all the time, it seemed like, back then. You know, he was different then. I mean, he was, he was definitely a kid who had a lot of problems. But there, you know, he was, he was charming. There was just something charming. Anyway, R.J. just was so there, and Hank was just so absent. Were you in love with him? No. 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 We were in-laws. That I knew. I also thought we were friends. We started hanging out together more. Partly because I wanted to help him get his life straightened out. You know, he listened to me back then. It's partly because I, I thought he liked me. Because he listened to me back then. Anyway. Um, one night at the pub after I was been there for a while, they decided uh, to go back to this house where there was a party going on and R.J. was there. And things got out of hand. And I made the worst mistake of my life. Well, that explains why R.J. is always so smug. And it explains why you blew your top when uh, R.J. came to Landview. I'm so ashamed of everything that happened between me and R.J. What's worse is that somewhere in this drunken stupor I had, I thought I was just lashing out at Hank. Is that... Is that... Is that the kind of woman that you want? See, is that the kind of wife that you would want? That kind of betrayal and manipulation and cruelty? Did Hank know about it? He didn't. He knows now. RJ crushed his wedding so he could tell him. Yeah, I think that's probably why he even came to Landview. What a guy. Yeah, he's been blackmailing me with it for years. You know, the threat of telling Hank, the threat of telling you, the threat of telling Rachel. Needless to say, Hank and my marriage never recovered. Yeah, but Hank didn't know about it. I knew about it. I was sick with the guilt of it. I want you to know how much that mistake has already cost me. And if it costs me you, I don't think I could stand it. Oh, God has it. Can you understand what happened? Can you, and forgive me? I'm worried, Rachel. Don't be. Oh, are you trying to tell me you're not buzzed right now? So what? I took a pill so I can ace my last exam, all right? And it worked out great, too. Oh, you got your grades back already? No. Then how do you know? Because I just know. I can just tell, all right? No. That is the speed telling you everything is great. And because you're, you're tired or, or, or a fool right now, you're willing to listen. 
I'm not tired. I'm fine. Why don't you just lay off? Oh, Black, I haven't seen this happen before. That stuff makes you feel great, like you can do anything, and you don't need any rest, so you go at it day and night like a house of fire for the rest of your life, which won't be very long if you don't listen. I don't need this lecture, all right? I just took the pill so I can get through my last final. Whatever you uh, it's took over. it for, you're gonna crash, Rachel, and sooner than you think. Then what are you gonna do? This is really funny. You taking this attitude. You're worse than my dad would be if he knew. You're not going to tell him, are you? <laughs> That's looking for a belt in the face. Me telling Hank his little girl's doing speed. Because it's just between you and me, right? Yeah. Okay. But only, only if you promise me something. What? That you will never pop one of those little overdrive pills again. And if you feel like you need to, please promise you'll call me first. I'm not gonna judge you, Rachel. I'm just looking out for you. You're my family, my only family. And I care, look, I worry about what happens to you and I want you to be okay. So will you promise, will you? Then you wrap the mixture in banana leaves, and then in the special paper, and then you tie the string around it. Some people only use the special paper, but I like the flavor of the leaves. Ma, you let them cook slowly. Ma, I'm sure Jessica's not interested in this. Sure I am. This is like nothing I've ever smelled before. I love it. <laughs> the seasoning is called recao. I wish I could tell you all the ingredients that go into a sofrito, but every family has their own recipe. My mother passed on her recipe to me in Puerto Rico, and I really wish I had a daughter to pass mine on to, but as you can see, Christian is not interested in cooking, only eating. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to learn more about this. I don't cook much, but... Uh... Well, if your parents say it's okay, sometime you can come over and I'll teach you. Great. Oh, hello. Oh, come in. Thank you, Christian. Hey, don't you be careful, Hello, please, come in, if you can. Mm, it's great in here. Thank you. Hi, honey. How happened to your arm? Oh, nothing. I just scraped it playing some basketball. Oh. Thank you for calling me about Jessica. Oh, that's all right. Uh, lovely home you have here. Thank you very much. I was glad to hear that you're not going to have to give it up. And thank you very much for that, too. Hmm. Jessica, whenever your parents say, you can come back and I'll teach you to cook. Thank you, Mrs. Vega. It was really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too, Jessica. Well. Uh, Good night. Good night, Mr. Buchanan. Good evening. Good evening. So, what really happened at the community center today? We may not be People Magazine's idea of couple of the year type. We've got a lot in common. Besides my money? Todd, we're both independent, driven, and we don't care what anybody thinks about us. In fact, everybody in this stupid town wants to see us crash and burn. Let's not give them the satisfaction. And face it, Todd, if you're going to be and want to be in the mainstream in this town, you're going to need a wife beside you. Oh, I am, huh? Count on it. And as far as I'm concerned, Melador is going to be a success. I mean, that was proven yesterday at Logan's. But Todd, to make that happen, I'm going to need you to keep backing me. There you go, just like I said, you need my money. You can't help me, Todd. But I can help you too. Look, I, I'm a realist here. I know that that building right there, the Manning building and the newspaper is what you love the most in this world. And I don't want you to fake it, that you love me. But Todd, we care about each other. And if we try to make this work, then we can prove to this town what we're really worth. Is now when the audience is supposed to start cheering? No. No. Just where I give you my terms, Todd. And this is the part where you tell me whether you're ready to accept them or not.
kind of questions were those, honey? Can I forgive you? Do I still want to marry you? First of all, it's not my place to forgive you. And second, yeah. Yeah, I still want to marry you. Because I love you more than anything in the world. You're a great woman. Am I shocked by what you just told? Yeah. I'm really shocked. But I know who you are now, and there's nothing that you could tell me about your past that could ever change the way I feel about you. I wouldn't want to marry you. Yeah, I wouldn't want to marry you. So, are you fully committed to this marriage now? Because tomorrow, I plan to promise to love, honor, and cherish you for the rest of my life. Now, if I'm going to make a vow like that, it would be nice to know if you're ready to make the same promise. So are you? is good. Is that right? Right? Yes. All right. All right. So then we do, we deserve each other, don't we? I mean, you never had to worry about me ever forgiving you. You gotta find a way to forgive yourself. I don't have a lot of experience in that. RJ Gannon is not part of our lives, so you gotta stop beating yourself up about him. Well, stop it. <laughs> Come on. We got to uh, go face the uh, the two clans at our uh, rehearsal dinner. Now, unless you want to run up and throw on a flak jacket. Actually, you're very good at finessing the family. And you know my parents are crazy about you. How about you go on ahead? And I'll meet you there in a little while. Yeah, but... No, I, I have to take care of something that's very important right now. Uncle RJ, I know you care, okay? But you don't need my promise because I have no intentions of taking uppers again. I just took them so I can get through my last exam. For your sake, I hope you really mean it. I do. Oh, I gotta go to the airport and take a cab, pick up my grandparents, they're, take them to the rehearsal dinner. <laughs> rehearsal dinner? Yeah, Mom and Bo, their wedding's tomorrow. Wedding? I didn't know. But will you wish her all the best from me? I... Okay. Thanks, Uncle RJ. Okay. I'll go along with your little arrangement. I mean, I'll really give it a try. But don't you make a jerk out of me. I wouldn't. You don't go mooning all over Court Roberts when he's in town. You can be my wife. You be my wife. Otherwise, the deal's off. You don't have to worry about Court. He's not a problem, not at all. So 
So what do we do now? Uh, actually, I'm exhausted. Okay. Some people brought food. Even my bizarre sister Vicky brought some kind of a casserole. You want to eat? No, I'm. I'm. I'm just gonna go upstairs and take a hot bath. Okay. I'm gonna go to the office. Some business at the Sun that I've been putting off. Okay. See you later. to change things around here. I hope you understand, Christian, that Jessica might not come back. Why? Mom, what, what, you think we're not good enough for her? You know, sh she's not like that. Oh, I'm sure you're right. But her parents might not permit her to come back. They're going to find out what really happened in the community center today. And even more than that, they won't forget that you're still under suspicion for the attack on Mrs. Vickers' niece. But, but, Ma, come on, I mean... Christian, Jessica's uncle is the commission of the police. It's not enough that you say you didn't do it. They want proof. Why are you saying all this? Maybe I'm wrong. I just don't want you to be hurt, that's all. Maybe it hurts you just as much for me to just say it, but... I don't think Jessica will be coming back to Angel Square. I wasn't wandering around. I was playing basketball at the community center. Jesse, right now, you are not the best one to decide on what is safe. There have been shootings in Angel Square lately. Blair Manning was beaten up and robbed in Angel Square. If you're trying to say Christian had anything to do with that robbing, then you... I'm not saying anything of the kind. He seems like a nice enough young fella. But I want to remind you that your parents are still in charge of where you go, who you go with, and when you go there. In other words, I'm like a hostage. Look, why don't you go get ready for your Uncle Bo's party? Hmm? Now, I understand that the women folk have got some, some surprises planned, and your Grandma Renee wants to talk to you about it. Okay? Look, Jesse, let's put our differences behind us and have a nice time tonight. Hmm? Sweetheart, trust me on this. You just don't understand how serious the situation in Angel Square is right now. Come on, go on, have some fun. No, Daddy, I don't think you understand. I expected to see tonight. 